Hello there. Come on in. I want to talk to you about Christmas. Now look at if you are one of those people who thinks Christmas is the happiest time of the year, stop watching this now because uh, we'll fall out. But if you are in any way, feel in any way vulnerable, stay with me and we'll talk. Um, I want to tell you the truth about Christmas. Um, I have learned over my many, many years that if you're in any way vulnerable, Christmas exacerbates it. Like if you're prone to anxiety or if you're already really, really overworked and stressed or if you're lonely or if you're bereaved, if your loved one has left you, um, if you haven't enough money, all of those things are made miles, miles worse by Christmas. Um, and the first thing that uh, I'd like to talk about is fear of your family. Um, there is no such thing as a functional family. Every family is in some way dysfunctional. Um, it, families are weird yokes. And if you're estranged from your family for your own self, self-care, that's fine, that's great. You're doing what's right for you. Um, and if you're afraid of going back to your family of origin, that's also normal, you know? And even if you have a good relationship with them, being back as an adult amongst your siblings and your parents has a very weird effect on us because when we're adults, we are far more powerful than we were as children. You know, we don't have to, we're not powerless in the way that we were when we were a child. But I found that, you know, when I lived in London and I used to come home, I used to slot right back into the person I used to be when I was a teenager in my early 20s. And, you know, I felt rage and resentment and I fought with my siblings. And there's something about being back in the family home that makes, that makes me revert to a younger self. And if that happens to you, and if you find it really painful, limit your exposure to them. And a lot of people do that. There's nothing kind of weird or shameful about doing that. Um, lie if you can't be honest, you know? If you don't have the, the courage, um, and I understand this, to say, um, I can't be with you because you terrify me and you make me feel insane and really depressed for weeks afterwards. If you can't say that, and that's fine, P pretend you're sick, get, get a second period that month, or, you know, suddenly develop a blinding headache. It's something that makes you escape if you're, in, if you're staying in the house, escape to your bedroom, or if you're visiting just for the day, to just leave, or to not go at all. You're allowed. And I think the really important thing all through Christmas is if you're feeling vulnerable, to keep talking to yourself, to keep saying, reminding yourself, you're doing okay. And if you have to show up, if you feel like you don't have the courage to not go, forgive yourself, you know, and say, you're okay. You're okay, you're doing this because the pain of not doing it would be greater. Now, if you are the person who is hosting the thing, I really, really feel for you because you have far less opportunity to escape. Um, and if you're already knackered, and most people are at this time of year because it sends us, like Christmas is a series of self-inflicted cruelties that we do as a society. And like, never forget that an awful lot of money is made out of the need for the perfect Christmas. I think Christmas is when we think, this is my opportunity to showcase myself and my family as the best version we are. And it reminds me of my poor dad, you know, the tension of Christmas Day. And I, you know, he used to be racing around and trying to make everything gorgeous and come and running out of the steam filled kitchen, like with plates of turkey that nobody would eat because it was too dry. And I could feel him thinking, I work so hard. I try so hard. I want us to be normal and perfect like other families. Why is it not happening? I have flung money at this. You know, um, we've put so much effort into it and it's still wrong. Um, if you are that woman, and it's usually a woman who feels like that, can you think about, you see, and I suffer from this as well, perfectionism. You know, I feel that if 
Christmas Day is not perfect. It means I have failed, that I am a failure as a person, that my relationships are failures and my family is a failure. But perfectionism is just such a brutal stick that we beat ourselves with. And there is no such thing as perfection. Like happiness with family members happens in split second moments here and there throughout the year and almost never on Christmas Day when the pressure is just being piled on people, piled and piled and piled. And when you're knackered and you're worried, it's not going to happen. And another thing, Christmas is about expectations. And like, expectations are simply disappointments under construction. Like, expectations are never going to be the beautiful things that we would like them to be. Now, another thing, that Christmas really brings up is loneliness. And I mean, there are all kinds of loneliness, like where you are literally, you know, on your own, you know, or, or you've recently lost somebody, you know, somebody, maybe your, your partner left you, or your partner died, or your parent died, or your child won't speak to you, or your best friend has cut you off, you know? And loneliness is, I think, one of the hardest things, really, because it's a powerless, position. You know, when you have the fear of family and everything, you can try and remove yourself. But with loneliness, I mean, one of the things that has often been said to me is, you know, to to go and maybe volunteer and, you know, help cook Christmas dinner for, for people who are even worse off than, than oneself. Um, and that's all well and good. But if you're already overwhelmed with misery, you know, uh, by the human condition, and you can't cope, then consider Christmas Day as just an ordeal, a series of hours and minutes to be endured. You know, and that's okay. There are times when like, there just is no point in trying to, to put a gloss on things. Sometimes you, you just have to look at like, say I've woken up at eight, it's eight in the morning and I will be going to bed at 11 o'clock tonight and that's 15 hours that I have to endure on my own and it is really, really unpleasant. And be nice to yourself. Keep saying to yourself, this is awful. This is awful, but it will end. And do whatever you can in that time to try and make the, the hours pass as, you know, try and distract yourself. But like, but never be cross with yourself for not being part of a so-called happy family. Because trust me, most people are having a pretty grim time on Christmas Day, if the truth be told. Um, another thing that kind of breaks my heart about Christmas is people who feel that they can't afford financially to, to give their children or their family the sort of Christmas that they see their siblings managing or their work colleagues or or just those imaginary families that that actually don't exist. And just remember that like, if you are poor, it's not your fault. This is a very unequal world we live in. And I worry about people getting into debt, you know, to give their children this sort of perfect Christmas. And if you feel that that's what you have to do, Forgive yourself for it. Like if you're going to do something like that, don't pile shame onto yourself um, into the bargain. If you feel you can step back and say to your kids, look, I'm really sorry, you know, but um, there just isn't the money this year. It'll be painful. It's painful because it's, we feel shame that is not earned. You know, I remember being so skint and, and I felt really ashamed, but it's not like I was a terrible person or a lazy person. It was just circumstances. So you, you shouldn't feel ashamed. Now, coming back to the person who was overworked, you know, knock three things off your list, please. Like, who cares if the trifle isn't homemade? If somebody whinges about, about it, say to them, all right, then, well, you can do it next year. You know, or like, you don't need four kinds of potatoes. Even Irish people, I'm saying this to you, you don't, you know, like everybody gets, okay, 
everyone does not get enough to eat on Christmas Day, but those who have, have too much on that particular day. Jesus Christ, those who can afford to feed themselves on Christmas Day are not going hungry the rest of the year. Calm down. You know, it really doesn't matter um, if some of the things are crossed off the list. Um, now, what else did I want to talk to you? Addictions. If you are prone to addiction, this time of the year just brings them to the surface like nothing else. Um, I don't drink anymore. And I am so grateful for that because Christmas was the worst time because it was sort of open season on drinking. So I could disguise myself as a normal drinker. And it just meant that I drank and drank and drank and drank and drank and went around sweating alcohol, you know, waking up sick and terrified and starting drinking again because it was OK, because it was Christmas. And, you know, for those with eating disorders, Christmas is again an awful time. For those with spending addictions, Christmas is horrific. Like it's trigger, 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 trigger everywhere. Like if you're an addict, take extra care of yourself at this time of the year. And if you're in recovery, be really, really careful with yourself because there's feckin' landmines everywhere. You know, there's things just waiting to, to, to start you again, you know, if you're, if you're not careful. And I think the most important thing is for anyone is to keep talking to your inside self, reminding yourself that you're okay, that like that you are better off being true to yourself than to do things to oblige other people. You know, like you really are. Um, you know, we're brought up to feel guilty if we don't do the supposed things. Um, and it doesn't matter. You know, we've got to mind ourselves. Like if you're prone to depression, if you're prone to anxiety, mother of God, again, this time of year, it's just, you know, it's, it's unavoidable, really. And the only person who can take care of ourselves is ourselves. Nobody else is really going to say, look at, take Christmas Day off, stay in bed, never mind the turkey, and don't be bothered getting up at five o'clock to cook it. You know, you're grand, we'll be grand, we'll have cheese and toast. No one is going to say that. No one except yourself. Um, and it takes courage to be able to disappoint people. Um, yeah, it does, you know, but look, all I'm saying is it's really hard. And it is one day. And get through it as, be as kind and as compassionate to yourself as you possibly can. And then all the parties and stuff around Christmas, fuck them. Don't bother going if you don't want. Just don't. Like, you know, most people who are at Christmas parties are langers drunk. They don't care if you're there or not. You know, all they want is an excuse to get jarred. You know, like, I'll just say it again. Mind yourself because nobody else will. And you deserve to be minded. And I suppose I'm more of a, aware of this than ever because of dad and everything. You know, we get one short, precious life. And how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. So be kind to yourself, be compassionate to yourself and try and enjoy it. And if you don't, if you don't enjoy it, you're not a failure. You're not a bad person. You're a normal person. Um, I will be back to you soon to complain about New Year's Eve. Um, so that is me finished complaining about Christmas for now. Remember, be kind to yourself. Adios, my amoebas.